क्वेश्चन नंबर एट इट सेज इन अ रियल हाइड्रोलिक प्रेस फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स इज बिटवीन द पिस्टन एंड द इनर सर्फेस ऑफ ट्यूब्स के नॉट बी निगलेक्टेड इन अ पर्टिकुलर रियल हाइड्रोलिक प्रेस ऑन इन द फिगर पिस्टन इन द वाइडर आर्म कैन स्टे इन इक्लिबेरियम अब अब द पिस्टन इन द नैरोवर आर्म एट एनी हाइट दैट रेंजेस फ्रॉम एच मिनिमम टू एच मैक्सिमम विच इज बेसिकली वन सेंटीमीटर टू टू सेंटीमीटर density of the material of the pistons is eta which is 3 times of that of the liquid or, or the fluid that has been used if thickness of the piston in the narrower arm is t which is 5 cm find the thickness of the piston in the wider arm so this is a hydraulic but uh, this is more real that means here we are considering the frictional forces now uh, i have drawn the similar same picture over here and let's say the gap between these two pistons is h this h will be ranging from h minimum to h maximum if we consider any piston so what are the forces that we are going to see one will be the gravitational force because of its own weight another is going to be atmospheric pressure force from the outside another will be pressure force inside the liquid from the inside the liquid and there will be friction acting on these surf uh, this this uh, contact point with the walls and this friction can be either upward or downward in these two pistons let's say this piston has cross sectional area s1 this piston has a cross sectional area s2 now when uh, this h is max that means this height is uh, this height gap is maximum that means the pressure at this point is maximum when the pressure just below this piston s1 is maximum that means this pressure force is going to have uh, maximum value which basically will say that this piston will have a tendency to move up since this piston has tendency to move up then the friction due to the walls on this piston is going to be vertically downward so that's what it is written when h is max then the friction on s1 piston will act downwards moreover uh, when this is uh, as uh, h is max uh, max value then you'll find this piston will be uh, having tendency to move downwards why so because the uh, pressure force uh, from the uh, this is going to be uh, less or less dominating and gravitational force will be dominating so the frictional force on s2 will be acting upwards and this will be occurring when h is max now consider this max case and then write the uh, equilibrium condition Uh, in equilibrium we will find uh, for the piston s1 there will be uh, upward force as p plus rho g h max into the cross sectional area s1 and from upward uh, upside there will be p not s1 force acting do uh, downward so this is going to be a total pressure force and it will be balancing the m1g which is downwards and the downward force that is going to be frictional let's call that friction as f1 and since it is in limiting condition so this f1 is going to be having its limiting value now we can divide this equation by s1 so it will become p minus p0 plus rho g h max is equal to m1 g by s1 plus f1 by s1 f1 is the limiting friction acting on this s1 piston now for piston s2 we can write equation so this pressure which we have used here so uh, p plus rho g s that means p is of this location so equation will be like p s2 minus p not s2 the net pressure force this must be a balancing m2 g which is downwards and the friction is now upwards so that will be minus f2 and uh, dividing this by s2 we will finding like p minus p not is equal to m2 g by s2 minus f2 by s2 to gain this equation you can clearly draw the free body diagram and to use the direction of friction on s2 upward you will get this equation now using these two equations we can say these two terms are identical or we can subtract whatever we want right so from here we can uh, rewrite this as uh, uh, this f1 now now just place this uh, p minus p not value over here so this minus f2 by s2 can be taken this side so friction term can be collect collected together so it will be like f1 s1 plus f2 f s2 
rest term will be brought in this uh, on this left word so it will be like m2 g by s2 and then this will become negative minus m1 g by s1 and then there is a positive rho g h max so this is the one relation which is for the case when h was maximum here f1 and f2 they are at their limiting values so they, they have uh, maximum values now uh, when h becomes minimum then situation will reverse so when h is minimum then the direction of friction on both the pistons will reverse so direction of friction on both the pistons will reverse uh, we can justify that, uh, that that because this is now now it has the least pressure force acting so this will have a gravity dominating so friction will be acting upward and similarly in this case friction will be acting downward so you'll find the equations will be again very similar the only difference will be where we were writing h max now it will be written h min and where we were writing f1 it would be written as minus f1 and f2 will become minus f2 so this equation can be copied by these changes so it will be like minus f1 by s1 minus f2 by s2 is equal to m2 g by s2 minus m1 g by s1 plus rho g h min so that can be written uh, directly as an equation uh, or otherwise we can do all these things and we will get the same equation back now these f1 and f2 which were earlier they are the same values because they are again in limiting conditions so we can say using this one and two if we, we add these two equations so they will get cancelled out so sum of these terms must be zero now when you write the sum that means these two terms are these terms are getting twice added right so we can write it's going to be like twice times m1 g by s1 minus m2 g by s2 must be equal to sum of these terms that is rho g h min plus rho g h max these two can be brought down so it will be like m1 g by s1 minus m2 g by s2 is equal to rho g h min plus h max by 2 now uh, g is getting cancelled out and this mass mass is of the piston pistons mass can be written as the density of piston into the volume volume could be written the cross-sectional area into thickness so you'll find cross-sectional area will get cancelled out and thickness will come there so it could be written as density of piston let's say rho dash into thickness which is t1 so this will become minus density of piston which is rho dash and thickness of second piston which is t2 this must be equal to rho h min plus h max by 2 now this density could be divided so you'll find t1 minus t2 is equal to rho divided by rho dash into this uh, h min plus h max by 2 now rho is the density of fluid rho dash is the density of uh, a piston question says that the density of material of the piston is eta times that of the fluid that means rho dash by rho is eta so it will be like t1 minus t2 is equal to h min plus h max divided by 2 times eta now this t1 is t so we, we are interested in finding t2 so t2 is going to be equal to t1 minus this number that means t2 is equal to t minus h min plus h max divided by twice eta so this is the expression to get the thickness of the second piston now t is known to us 5 cm h min h max they are 1 and 2 so 1 plus 2 divided by 2 times eta eta is 3 so 1 plus 2 3 3 and 3 getting cancelled out is like 5 minus half that is 4.5 cm so the thickness of the second piston is going to be 4.5 cm or we can write this as expression to get the um, thickness of the second piston mind it here f1 and f2 they are uh, limiting frictions if we are not taking this h as extremum then the frictions will be uh, static and static frictions are self-adjusting so depending on h value they will be different value they, they will have a different values however when h is extremum then the friction will be having extremum in both the cases and limiting friction remains the same which is mu in mu s into normal reaction hence these frictions and these frictions have same value that's why uh, we have used them as the same and then adjusted them to get this expression okay so this is how we got our answer thank you